Greetings, family, friends, and survivors. A little up at my neighbors today. And just right, 25% in that tank. Gibbs and I just brought the other tank up and it's at 80% and there's two spares here and that'll definitely get them through the, the snowy months. Uh, the worst it's been up here is about six feet in, in my lifetime, in my experience in this area. Um, but if you get snowed in up here, it's it's nice to be able to have hot water and be able to cook on something besides the wood stove. So I'm very concerned about their batteries, and I'll take you up to the battery house and show you. I didn't want to fire up the diesel this morning. I wasn't planning on being here very long. I'm a dead top on that fir tree. Sudden Oak Death Syndrome is here. So I came up and the batteries were at 11.5. To me, that's cataclysmic, unrecoverable. Uh, you do that a couple of times and I think that's been the normal regimen. But these batteries are five years old, so they're looking to replace them after this winter. And I'm just hoping we can get it through this winter. So I brought the little portable up to throw a quick charge on it rather than firing the generator and letting the generator charge it through one of these shop battery chargers that are in here. Really inefficient way to do it. And the solar panels in back are supposed to be mounted on this roof. Sorry about the noise. But you can see this time of year, they're not gonna get anything. And uh, those are placebos, placebo panels. Um, they would do something seven months out of the year if they were on the roof and you cut all this brush down, but uh, they're not doing anything. Gibbs, get off those. That's silly. Those are old, old, 30 year old Arcos. So I'll show you the batteries. It's gonna get noisy, so you might wanna attenuate your volume. There used to be one more, but the way they had the batteries configured, um, they were charging all the way from one end and they weren't doing it diagonally. So that one battery died, took it out, and everything kind of came back to life. So let's check the voltage. So well, I've got them up to 13.3, but when I take the load off, that's going to change the charge. So let's go ahead and check the, how much current we're pushing in there. 29 amps. And no load for 12.5. But I know that's artificial. I've only had this charger on just for about 20 minutes. That's hard one handed. That's better. that you get if you're going to try to charge a large battery bank with a small alternator the alternators get really hot and they, most of the newer ones have resistors in them that modify the output so that when they start to get hot they start backing the current down this one does so even though it's a 65 amp alternator it's only putting out 31 amps because of the heat. Uh, when I first put it on, it was really loading the motor. So, 
typically if you're going to run a car alternator to charge a large battery bank where the alternator is going to be under heavy load for hours at a time you want to stay under a 50 percent duty cycle so if you're needing a simple math of a 50 amp load you'd want a 100 amp alternator and so forth in this case it's a 65 amp and it's temperature compensated and it just backs off to a safe current in this case 31 at this outside temperature so the way they've been running this is there's a propane refrigerator and LED lighting uh, and they usually only watch videos or something like that maybe an hour a month and only when the generator's running the house is just loaded with books and that's what they do is read uh, so they don't have a whole lot of demand so these batteries have lasted five years by running the generator one hour a day and that it's amazing that they've lasted this long because you can bulk the batteries in an hour but it takes an additional three or four hours to finish your absorb cycle and that's only with a charge that has a three-stage minimum charge algorithm so with just an alternator uh, finishing the charge eight ten hours probably what needs to happen is run this generator for um, eight or ten hours to really condition the batteries uh, so really if they were charging the battery one hour a day and then once a week they ran it for four hours they might extend their battery life a little bit longer uh, as i said it's amazing that they've got five years out of these batteries running them this way it's just like they should have died a long time ago so there's not a whole lot of use uh, one hour a day uh, in the diesel generator that's just hardly any fuel at all and then they pump water get this they run the well one hour a month and the tank runs over so it's just how little water they're actually running so pretty simple way of living and uh, not a whole lot of needs kind of old school and really we don't need any more than that so there's no real need to you know they burn wood for heat and they quite often cook with the wood so there's no uh, real need to cut a bunch of trees down and put in a, a big solar array here and spend ten twelve thousand dollars and because uh, you still couldn't convert the house to a heat pump with a twelve thousand dollar solar system so just really just replace your batteries every five years or so and show you how old this place is I'll show you their original set of batteries it's gonna be noisy but you'll get a kick out of these there they are glass jar that one's busted Now they gave these to me, but I need help getting them out of here. They're heavy. And you can actually rebuild these glass jar uh, batteries. You can disassemble them. Uh, they're set in tar or tar seal on the top. You can clean the plates physically and refill them with electrolyte. But they are heavy. And I thought of doing that just for fun. All right, come in and look at the propane water heater install and just like it should be it's still running and actually doing pretty good their other one lasted 12 years okay you might recognize that picture behind me at any rate uh, this should be my last trip up here until it snows and Carol and I and another neighbor but they've got all their wood in, everything that they're going to need for the winter. And I shouldn't need to come back up unless something breaks or the snow's too deep and they can't get up or they can't get down as, you know, as a snow or emergency taxi service. And uh, this is uh, not my closest neighbor, but um, I'm their closest neighbor, if that makes sense to you. 
All right. Well, folks, we're going to have five days of cold weather and sunshine. And we're loving it. Have a blessed day.